This episode is brought to you by Adorama. If you're looking for photography, video, imaging, or tech needs, be sure to check out Adorama.com. Hi, my name is Rich Harrington for Adorama TV, and today we're talking about the Sony NEX VG900 camera. This is a full frame handy cam from Sony. It's priced very similar to higher end DSLR type bodies. It's really meant for people that are looking for a professional grade camera that's small, high quality image, but simple to portable. You can get this where you need to, small to pack, easy to move to different environments. Now, speaking to the form factor, the camera itself is very light. The heaviest thing on the camera right now is actually the lens. But the camera body itself comes in at about 1.8 pounds. Now, let's just remove the lens here for a second, and I'll just pop this off from the mount. There we go. And very, very light. Now, this is going to be easy to put into a pack if you need to take it out for field work, a carry-on bag, a small backpack. This is not a bulky camera to take into the field. The other nice thing is it's light enough that you could easily put it on something like a monopod. Now, let's talk about the camera itself, the sensor and the lenses. You've got really a lot of flexibility. You could put both E-mount and A-mount lenses on here, which are Sony's type of lenses. It does include the LA EA3 adapter, and this comes in the kit. Let's just remove it for a second. And I push that button, and you see the lens adapter comes off. So with this lens adapter, I can go ahead and mount the A lenses or the E lenses. It gives me that flexibility, but we'll just put that adapter back on and connect the lens. There we go. And it locks into place. So a lot of flexibility. This is a full frame sensor. It does allow for 35 millimeter style capture. The sensor in here, huge, 24 megapixels when shooting stills, and it really is a full size sensor. So you get that great shallow depth of field. Most video cameras are gonna have crop sensors or APS type sensors, which really minimizes the ability to shoot wide open with shallow depth of field, and it cuts down on the low light performance. This camera with a full frame sensor is giving you that great control over shallow depth of field. It really lets you do that distinctive defocusing that's very popular with this type of shooting. It also is gonna be outstanding in low light situations. So you shoot concerts, nighttime, sports, those sorts of activities, this is gonna be a great camera for that. All right, let's talk a little bit about the viewfinder and the LCD. You've got a nice articulating viewfinder here. And what happens is, is when I put this up to my eye, it's gonna go ahead and turn on, which is great. Now, this means that it's not gonna be pulling battery power until you actually position the eye. There's just a little sensor in here and it detects when the light's been blocked out and it kicks it on. It's nice that you can adjust this. So if you're shooting on a tripod or in different positions from shooting up at eye level, cradling the camera down, it gives me that flexibility, and it really has a good swivel display there. Speaking of swivel, we have the same thing here on the actual LCD. So what this is gonna give us is the ability here to adjust, and you'll notice that it turns all the way to facing backwards. So if you were putting the camera on a tripod and speaking into it yourself, you can use this perhaps the world's largest and highest quality web camera in that mode. But you can also, of course, turn this and articulate it to any direction, turning a full 270 degrees. This gives me the flexibility for shooting overhead. I can actually see that and point the LCD panel at me or flipping it over and cradling for shooting down low. All of this gives me greater flexibility and it's nice to have that full 270 degrees rotation. Now, the LCD panel also serves another function, and that is for menus. When you have this engaged and you start to go into the menus, there's lots of options. You can start to work through the menus and really take precise control of the camera, and that works well. You've got really a high resolution display here. So both of these are gonna give you good contrast ratio, which makes it easier to shoot in bright light situations. All right, let's talk a little bit more about controls. This type of camera has auto controls if you want it. You can get in there and you can let the camera do everything for you. Things like autofocus, auto iris, that's great. But you do have some extra flexibility. For example, while we have a non-zoom lens on here, if I use the zoom rocker, it's actually gonna do a digital zoom, which gives me a little bit of flexibility. Now, digital zooming is not ideal, but sometimes you might be shooting with a prime lens or not be in a situation where you can easily adjust the lens. And so to be able to punch in just a little bit or loosen up a little bit to get the shot, very, very desirable. On the side too, we also have several dedicated buttons. What's nice about this is it's great to have manual control. 
I can control the iris. I can adjust the gain on the camera. I can actually adjust the shutter speed. And all of these really let you take precise control. These are convenient right on the outside, so being able to adjust things like the iris, controlling the aperture, the shutter speed, those are really helpful when you are in a shooting situation. The ability to quickly adjust ISO without having to stop the camera and go into a menu. On the other side though, really having precise control with easy touchscreen controls as opposed to having to use a joystick makes it simple in the field. And remember, you could flip this around and have it on the side of the camera. So if I needed to get into the menus, I could see that right there and have all my controls right on the side of the camera. So that's really useful or we actually have some additional buttons back here as well, giving us some tactile control. I think what you're gonna find is that the buttons are readily accessible for the frequently needed features. The ability to dial these in really comes in handy and the dial can actually be customized. So it is assignable and this gives you some flexibility. So on that dial, you can map things like iris and shutter speed, exposure compensation, the ability to do white balance, tracking of focus, audio levels, lots of things. It even has things like the ability to tweak the cinema curve so you can really play with the gamma and the fine controls. What I really like here is that this has the ability to punch in. We've got a dedicated button right on top here that basically does expanded focus. When I punch that, what happens is, is it goes in larger on the sensor and I could check for critical focus. It's very difficult to set critical focus, particularly with a prime or a DSLR type lens, without having that ability you can now punch in and accurately see what's there. You'll also get exposure assist and you get things like zebra bars, which are handy, and the autofocus is very solid with 25 focus points. So all in all, works very well to get you those types of results. Let's talk about the file formats. This is one area that the camera stood out for me. I've got six different data rates that I could record at, which is nice. They range from 28 to nine megabytes per second. This is really good for most users. Now, at the high end, you can do 28, and this is designed for really good HD shooting. This is pushing this up into the realm of top professional cameras. But then there are other types of HD rates ranging from 24 to 17, and even a high quality mode at nine. And this is gonna work very well for lots of standard shooting, industrials, web video content. If you are really pinched for space, you will find other ones, a long play mode to let you get more recording, and some other standard definition modes for shooting in high quality. This does shoot to the very robust AVC HD file format, which is widely used in professional circles. This can be easily edited with tools like Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere Pro or Avid. You can integrate that material in very seamlessly, often these days without the need to transcode. And it also supports very professional frame rates. You could do your standard definition type frame rates, but what I like in HD, 24p, 60p, or 60i. Now the 60i is gonna be very useful for people essentially doing what was often called 30 frames per second in standard definition workflow. So you really have 24, 30, and 60. But having that choice is nice. Most DSLRs leave that out. As far as memory cards go, a lot of flexibility. If you're a Sony user, you could stick with the Memory Stick Pro and that's gonna work for you, or the Duo formats. But for most users, the more common SDHC and SDXC card formats are gonna work quite well. I think you're gonna find that this is gonna give you a lot of flexibility when shooting and the memory cards are readily available. You're not locked into some proprietary system that you have to go out and get. Now, let's talk a little bit about audio. The camera has a lot to like and a couple things I'd like to see improved. It does have a very high quality built-in mic. It actually is a 5.1 surround sound mic, which is cool. And it has the ability to record true surround sound. So if you're traveling to exotic destinations and you want to get great environmental audio, you absolutely can do that with this built-in mic. If you're shooting things like dialogue, then you're gonna go into one of the jacks. And we actually have several ports on the camera making it easy to run audio in. It is using a stereo mini jack as opposed to an XLR jack that some pros would like, but you can get an adapter for this. This is one of those areas that I wish they would have put an XLR adapter in, but I think that the built-in mic being high quality, the ability to have a hot shoe and accessory ports on the top are gonna to allow you to attach additional things up here, including some adapters that'll make it easier, and you do have built-in line jacks so you can run the audio in. I think you're gonna be fine. So why would you buy this camera over a high-end digital SLR type camera? Well, a couple things stand out. 
good high quality imaging sensor. It's a CMOS sensor, 35 millimeter full frame. There are of course full frame HD DSLRs as well, but this is designed to not have some of the heat issues that some of those cameras are prone to having. This is first and foremost meant to be a video camera. If you do, you can switch to the APS-C type mode, giving you more flexibility with lenses. Essentially at that point, it's gonna run as a crop sensor and that's gonna give you a little bit more reach on your lenses. So the ability to switch can be beneficial. I also like that I could attach an external monitor. The HDMI port is a clean, uncompressed HDMI output. So if you don't wanna to go to AVC HD, maybe you need to run this into a switcher. You could do a live feed, or you could run this into a higher quality disc recorder and record to whatever format you need, like ProRes or Avid DNX HD. So this gives you a lot of options. Also, the shutter speeds are designed for video. Rather than having choices like a 50th, you actually could shoot a true 48th of a second, and you've got great manual controls. You could dial that shutter speed in. You'll find that it ranges all the way up to 10,000th, and you're never really gonna use that for video, but you do have the flexibility to dial in the look that you want with that manual shutter speed. Really though, that speed is there because this is also a very versatile stills camera. So the fact that when shooting stills, you can go to 8,000th of a second is gonna give you a lot of flexibility with how you shoot. Speaking of stills, you have the ability to capture high quality still files to this. It actually does shoot RAW files or JPEG. There is a photo button, so if you're out there and about and you need some great stills, with high quality glass, you could pull that off. My recommendation is this camera is great for those of you that need a professional quality camera. You're looking for a lot of the pro features that are found on bigger cameras in a super small, lightweight package. You're going to like this. This is a camera that's going to be really easy to take on remote trips, to take backpacking, to take into the field to capture footage and B-roll. The fact that it actually supports the really high quality AVC HD and professional broadcast quality data rates means that this camera is going to be a great addition to a lot of pros workflow. So be sure to head on over to Adorama and you can check out the reviews on the website as well as take a look at all the extensive options that are available. We've got an accessory port, you've got all sorts of lenses, things like extra batteries so you can get longer shooting, the memory cards. You'll find all of that over at Adorama.com and you can check that out and really put together a comprehensive kit. For Adorama, my name's Rich Harrington. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.